my ex is confused, what should I do? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. But first, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not, because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. And if you agree with me, do me a favor by hitting the thumbs up button for this video and by subscribing to the YouTube channel as well. When you hit that thumbs up button, you are telling YouTube that this is a nice video and you might be able to help this video show up in search results for other people who might benefit from watching it too. So it's kind of like you're paying it forward. So help a guy out, help me out and help maybe some other folks who maybe down the road might need to hear this advice out if you do like this video. So um, it is a popularity contest, YouTube is. Um, so anyway, um, today we're talking about what to do when your ex is confused. And, you know, I was on a group coaching call yesterday, um, actually pretty much all day yesterday, and I kind of started to notice this theme of like, okay, there are people who are maybe stuck in a certain situation where their ex isn't choosing to really let go of them, but they're also not choosing to be in a relationship with them, and they're kind of stuck in this sort of middle gray area. Um, and obviously, I don't want you to get stuck in this middle gray area indefinitely, like forever. That's that's not good. Um, there is a time and place for that gray area. We've mentioned this before in previous videos, how it makes sense to have that gray area where there's no label between the two of you so that you can actually spend time together, connect more, build up that emotional connection and all of that. But there is going to come a point in time where you want to leverage the emotional connection that you have built up to get them to choose to either commit to you or to not commit to you, okay? And so typically, that's what we need to do when your ex is confused, when they are kind of, you know, definitely into you for some reason, um, you know, romantically, physically, emotionally, whatever, but they're also not ready to commit to you for another reason, um, you know, out of, you know, any, any other possible reason. We want to kind of get them to show their hand. And this is tough. This is really tough, you know, especially for a lot of heart-centered people out there. Um, you know, you have empathy, you can, you know, feel your ex's pain, you can feel their confusion, you can feel the, the struggles and challenges that they might be experiencing, and you, you know, want to give them compassion, you want to give them um, consideration, you want to be respectful of what they're experiencing. But here's the thing, you know, you have to take a stand for yourself and for your own needs, because your ex might not have your needs in their best interest. You know, the, their, your ex might not be kind of taking your needs into consideration. They might just be kind of, you know, steering the boat in whatever direction suits them. And that's not necessarily going to get your needs met, especially if you're busy being concerned about them. There's no one really looking after your needs. So you need to love yourself enough to take a stand for you and to make sure that you are getting your needs met. So with that being said, um, when your ex is confused, yes, by all means, be compassionate and empathetic, but do so secondarily to making sure that your needs are met. And what you want to do is you want to use what we call, you know, the, the one-way spikes of doom strategy. Um, and basically what this is is how certain, you know, parking garages or car parks, um, they have these like metal spikes that you can drive over one way and the spikes go down and everything's great. But if you drive over them the wrong way, then there's some pain, right? You kind of regret that you did that because you just ripped up your tires. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to kind of use the one-way spikes of doom strategy to kind of help your ex to make certain decisions. So what often happens in these situations where your ex is confused is people kind of end up getting stuck in this sort of cycle that goes around and around and around. You know, maybe they end up getting close, they get close, they get close, but then something happens, their ex pulls away, they say they're not ready to commit, they say that they just want to be friends, they say that they should, you know, not see each other romantically anymore, and then they pull back for a little bit, and then they start to warm up again, and then the cycle kind of keeps going around and around. And we don't want this to happen because it's not going to help you get into the relationship that you want to be kind of stuck in this sort of half quasi relationship indefinitely. And um, 
what we want to do is we want to find out sooner rather than later if your ex has the capacity to actually commit to you or if they don't have the capacity to commit to you. If they do have the capacity to commit to you, okay, let's get them to play their hand so that the two of you can get committed, get into a relationship, uh, you know, explore what that might look like, maybe get married, start a family, all that stuff that, you know, you might want to do once you actually have this whole relationship part of your life handled. Or if they don't have the capacity to do that, let's find out sooner rather than later so that you're not wasting months or years of your life potentially with someone who doesn't have the capacity to commit to you, okay? So what we want to do is we want to break that cycle by laying down some of these one-way spikes of doom. So when things start to get rough, for example, uh, you know, your ex is pulling away after being very nicely connected to you for a while. They say, hey, I think that we shouldn't be together anymore. I think that we should, um, you know, just be friends or whatever the case may be. Then what you want to do is you want to get curious. You want to get curious and you want to say, oh, you, wanna, you want us to not be in a relationship and you think that we should just be friends. Is that right? And then, you know, they have the opportunity to say yes or no. And if they say Yes, that's right. I think we should, you know, not see each other anymore, and I think we should be friends. And then you say, okay, are you, are you sure you want us to, to just, like, not talk anymore? Like, do you really just want things to be over for us once and for all? And again, we're giving them the opportunity to say yes or no. We're kind of pointing out the spikes that they're driving over. And um, then that gives them the opportunity to say yes or no. And then we t say, like, okay, well, where I'm at right now, this is where we're kind of enforcing a boundary, we're kind of saying what is important for us and what our values are. Well, where I'm at right now is I actually do want to be in a relationship. Um, and I, I, I was, you know, depending on where things are between the two of you, you might say, well, and I was hoping that I might be able to be in a relationship with you. If you're not open to that, that's totally okay. Again, we want to be accepting of them how they are. But what I want is a relationship. So if we're not going to be together, then I might need to go out and date other people. Is that okay with you? Again, the one-way spikes, the opportunity to say yes or no. If they say, yes, it's okay for you to go out and date other people, then you say, okay. And anyone else that I might date, they're probably not going to be comfortable with the way that the two of us have been interacting. You know, if you're doing that whole cycle thing where you, they pull back and then you get warm and you're, you know, spending time together, maybe being intimate with each other and all of that. Um, so I think that we should maybe end things between you and I. Is that okay with you? And again, we're giving them the opportunity to say yes or no. If they say no, it's not okay any step along the way in this process. Okay, great, we can talk about it. But if they say yes, again, they're driving over those one-way spikes. And we're saying like, okay, well, if that's really what you want to do, we can do that. Now, where I'm at is I, I do enjoy spending time with you, and I do want to see what might be possible between the two of us. But if this is really what you want, we can do that. And then this is the hard part, is after they've gone over the one-way spikes, you have to enforce that boundary. Because if they come back and go back to that cycle that just goes around and around and around, you're going to end up in that dynamic again. You have to love yourself enough to break that dynamic. Yes, you can be compassionate for them, but you have to take care of yourself first. You have to love yourself enough to take care care of yourself. You have to, you know, put on your own um, oxygen mask before you put on someone else's. We, we can often lose sight of ourselves as we try to take care of other people or you try to be considerate of other people, but you have to take care of yourself first because if you don't, there might not be anyone else out there taking um, care of your needs for you. So please love yourself enough to enforce that boundary. And you know, sure, go ahead, extend a golden bridge or something so that they have the opportunity to come back to you and to save face if they want to. But you have to let them experience the consequence of their decision to not commit, the consequence of their confusion, the consequence of their inability to get clear about what they want or what they don't want. And if that means that they might have to spend some time without you to really feel that weight, to feel what it's like to not be in that cycle, then that's what they need to do. And as they start to experience that consequence, they may realize, oh, wow, it actually sucks not being able to be close to you. It's actually not fun to not be able to have that positive you know, cycle up on that circle. Um, and 
then they might start to come back to you, especially if you've extended a golden bridge so that they know that they can come back and without you know being embarrassed and they can save face and all that. Um, but you want to be able to do this so that they can come back. And when they do come back, you know, you want to make sure that something is actually different. Something has changed. Like, what changed? Now, before uh, last time we talked, um, it seemed like you were really against the idea of us being in a relationship. It's totally fine if, um, you know, we take it slow and we just see uh, how we connect with one another. But what changed since then? Just give them the opportunity to tell you if or what has changed since then so that they can kind of come back and so that you can know that you're not getting into the same cycle that goes around and around and around indefinitely, okay? And if they haven't shown any substantial change, then again, you have to love yourself enough to have that boundary, to keep those one-way spikes of doom pointing back so that they really can't come back into you unless something has changed, all right? So um, it's tough. It is tough. It's hard to enforce these boundaries. It's much more easy to stay in your comfort zone and just to, you know, go with the flow or whatever. But you got to do this if you want to break the cycle, if you want to find out sooner rather than later if the two of you have the, the capability of being in a relationship, of actually having that relationship. I don't want this vague, nebulous thing to just stretch on forever and ever, years and years and years, decades even. Will you miss out on the opportunity to, you know, celebrate wedding anniversaries, have, you know, your, your friends and family at your wedding party, you know, start a family, share all these moments together. I want you to have those things. And so that's why we can't just screw around here going in this circle forever. You have to love yourself enough to hold that boundary firm. Okay. And if they do come back, that's great, but make sure that something's different. All right. So anyway, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, I'm going to be taking the next week off. I have some videos scheduled and queued up and all that stuff uh, that I filmed beforehand, but I'm taking the next week off to go to um, some small towns outside of the city here to see if there's any, if there's actually the kind of place that we'd like to live in. Um, and, you know, maybe we might make an offer on some houses if we find the right house for us or something. But, um, yeah, that's what I've got going on next week. Uh, who knows? Maybe the next time I sit down and do some of these videos, <sighs> I might actually own a house. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but hope you have a great weekend. Hope everything's well for you. And once again, if you do like what we're doing here, please do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to this channel if you are not already subscribed. And, you know, maybe share it with someone who you think might be able to benefit from some of this advice if you know someone that might be kind of going through one of these, you know, circular patterns or something like that. Anyway, thank you so much. If you do want to learn more about common problems and issues that people have getting back together with their exes, there is this video playlist series over here, or you might want to check out this video over here. But once again, thank you so much. Please take care. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you next time.